Welcome one, welcome all to, in my opinion, the most anticipated Quincy Ball Sports video of the year. Because think of how much bracketologies we do. This is the real bracketology that matters. The official Quincy Bell Sports bracket picks will be coming in just a moment. Um, but first, there is a link in the description for the QBS Bracket Challenge. If you have not already, go join that up. Go join the Bracket Challenge. Um, there's over 180 people in there already. Um, go join the Bracket. The winner gets to come on the channel. Talk about their picks. It's a yearly tradition. This is year four. If you count the year that got canceled, this is year four of bracket picks. Um, please make your bracket name. Either your name or like a Twitter or an Instagram so I can I can contact you if you win. If your bracket name is just ESPN fan 5462839, I can't find you if you win. So just make it your name. I'll find you. Um but yeah, selection Sunday was this was yesterday. It's Monday. It's time for the picks. We've got uh, the board. That's the board, big board uh, of picks. See, look at it, giant board. I was. Uh, it's kind of the tradition. We got to get the board. I'm gonna hang it up on the wall uh, when uh, when I'm done with this video. But uh, let's uh, let's get into some picks, shall we? This is my official bracket. All right, we're going to start off with the West region of play. All right, we're going to start off with the West region. Uh, number one seed, Gonzaga. Uh, they are, they were the number one overall seed, won the West Coast Conference like they normally do. And they were able to get uh, the automatic bid. Uh, they're the favorite to win this region, but there are some good teams in this region, like Duke. And Texas Tech's really good. Arkansas, UConn is a sleeper. I think they're really good. Um, so there are some uh, good quality teams in this uh, in this region. So let's start off with these first with the first batch of picks. Uh, I got Gonzaga over Georgia State. Should be a pretty straightforward pick. Uh, yeah, pretty easy there. Boise State, Memphis. This was close. Most people are taking Memphis. I looked, 60% of people, I think like 65% of people are on Memphis in this one. I'm going to take Boise State. They got some dogs. They won one of the hardest conferences in basketball, or one of the harder, not the hardest, but one of the harder conferences in college basketball, the Mountain West. So they, they've got some dogs on their team. Um, I don't like Memphis's non-tournament, they don't have much tournament experience. UConn, New Mexico State. New Mexico State should not be a 12. They are way overseeded, in my opinion. I don't think they should be anywhere near uh, a 12 seed. I think it should be more like a 14 or 15. There are some 14 or 15 seeds that I think should be 12s over New Mexico State. UConn should get an easy dub in that game. Next up, I like Vermont. This is an upset pick that I like a lot. If y'all saw them play UMBC in their conference title game, you know why I'm picking them. They went 18-1 and in the America East and had an average margin of victory by like 30 points. I mean, uh, the, uh, the one game they played against the tournament team or like a really good team, they played Providence and they lost by like, I think like 5 or 10. They held them close. They've got a really good team. They're hot right now. They shoot well from three. They're always kind of in the tournament, but they've yet to really win a game in the tournament. I like their odds here. Give me give me the catabouts to upset uh, the Razorbacks. Alabama and the winner of Rutgers and Notre Dame. I'm definitely going to take... Uh, I'm definitely going to take Alabama. I definitely think that they're better than both of those teams. Uh, and Texas Tech and Montana State, I'm not even going to lie, I thought about taking an upset this year. Montana State's had a really good year the entire year. Um, they could be a sneaky, sneaky upset pick, but, I mean, I, I just couldn't. I, just, I couldn't. I couldn't go against Texas Tech. And then the last, last batch of games we've got here, this Michigan State-Davidson game is very intriguing just because Davidson's leading scorer is an MSU transfer, Foster Lawyer. He was a dog at Michigan State. I liked him. He came off the bench, uh, but he was like he was a bucket off the bench. Not even gonna lie. He transferred to Davidson, and he's been Davidson's leading scorer this year. It, this is a dog fight. This would be a great game. I'm excited to watch that one. But I think the experience of Tom Izzo ultimately gets gets it done in the tournament. 
the Duke and Cal State Fullerton. I'm going to be taking. Uh, I'm going to be taking Duke. Uh, easy, easy in that game. All right, second round. Gonzaga, Boise State. I'll be taking Gonzaga. Uh, I will say though, close. Gonzaga, close. Boise State's got some players. They can they they can hang around in that game. And I think UConn will beat Vermont. You guys got a really good big man. I can't remember his name for the life of me, but they've got a really good big man right now. And then this game, I'm gonna take Texas Tech and Duke. Uh, Izzo defeated Coach K the last time that these teams met in the uh, in the tournament. Or no, no, Izzo defeated Coach K last time they met in the tournament. Uh, I think that Duke's going to be at a, a bit of a revenge game. And I don't think Michigan State is really all that great this year. They've got a good team, but I don't think they can hang with Duke. I got Gonzaga moving on to the Elite Eight. Uh, to be honest, it, I think if they play Arkansas, they will lose. I think, Arkansas, I think if Arkansas wins this game, they'll make it all the way to here. But I don't see them getting past Vermont. Does that make sense? I think if Arkansas wins this game, they'll get to the Elite Eight and beat Gonzaga. I just don't see him. I see Vermont giving them a hard time in the first round. But other than that, they should be able to handle UConn. And I got Texas Tech beating Coach K. I kind of been ragging on Texas Tech. But here's the thing, right? Texas Tech have been playing great throughout the entire year. They beat Baylor twice. I think they beat Kansas once. Um, and they have been doing really well in the Big 12, but they kind of were, have been slowing down near the end. They're going to have a bit in this week to regroup, fix the problems, fix their woes on offense. And they didn't even play that badly against Kansas in the Big 12 championship. I like the improvements Texas Tech's going to be able to make. I think that they're very well coached. I like uh, I like Texas Tech's odds to get past a Duke team that has been very inconsistent all year. I mean, they have some head-scratching losses. So really close games that they probably should have won by more. This Duke team has been all now, and think about this. They lost Coach K's last game because they couldn't handle the pressure of such a big game. And they lost the ACC title. They, they've lost the two biggest games they've played in. So I don't like their odds going far in the tournament. And then to make the uh the final four out of this region, I have. Texas Tech. You heard me correctly. I got the Red Raiders coming out of the West region. They beat Gonzaga last last time they were a three. They beat Gonzaga when they were a one. Um, they play great defense. They've got some dogs on their team. And Gonzaga, every single year, every single year, they're a one seed or a two seed. And they've never won a national title. They've never done it. Until Gonzaga wins a national title, I will not pick them to win a national title. I will not do it. I like Texas Tech coming out of this region. They've got some dogs, and they uh, will have been prepared better throughout the season. Than Texas, that, uh, Texas Tech will be prepared better throughout the season than Gonzaga. Texas Tech has been playing some legit teams all year in the Big 12. So they're going to be better prepared, in my opinion, to... Uh, to come into a tournament where you got to win hard game after hard game after hard game after hard game. So, let's move on to the South region. All right, South region. Number one seed is Arizona. They finished the season, I think, 31-3. and three. They completely dominated teams throughout uh, the Pac-12. And they are, they've got some, do they, well, they, the way they play, they've got uh, two big men. They've got Coloco. And Matherin, who are just animals, um, they are absolute dogs. The, and they've got here's the thing that obviously the big men are their main, are the main strength of their team, but they've got shooters. They can run the floor too. They like to get up and down, play with tempo. Um, if you don't like to play fast, you do not want to play Arizona. Uh, other good teams, Villanova. They're starting to peak at the right time. They just won the Big East, and they uh, are starting to catch a rhythm at a dangerous time. I don't think you want to play. Uh, the Wildcats right now. Uh, Illinois, always a good team on the Big Ten regular season. They've got Kofi Coburn, big guy who can hang with the guys in Arizona. Tennessee, good team with Vescovy and Kennedy Chandler, who's a sharpshooting uh, freshman from three. Uh, Colorado State is a sneak, uh, is a sneaky team here. Houston made the Final Four last year. Definitely a balanced and uh, pretty good region. 
Let's start with the picks. I'm going to take Arizona to beat, uh, I think Bryant will beat, uh, Bryant will beat Wright State, but they're not going to beat Arizona. TCU, I think, will beat Seton Hall. Uh, TCU, I felt like, was pretty under -seated. I think they should be switched. Actually, TCU's actually the 9. Seton Hall's the 8. I accidentally switched them. Ohio State should be a 9, and TCU should be a 7. Uh, but TCU is way under -seated. They were playing really well against some of the best teams of the Big 12 near the end of the season. Dangerous team, TCU. And I like UAB. Them and Texas, uh, North Texas, were competing for Conference USA. And I feel like every single year, Conference USA does well. Middle Tennessee beat Michigan State. Uh, last year, North Texas won. Um, there have been Marshall won one year. Every single year, Conference USA performs well in the tournament. Um, they always they always come up with some good teams. And UAB is another one of them. I guess the Houston team where I'm not sure. They've had some clunkers. They've had some games where they just look like they don't know what they're doing. Like the entire game. So I'll take UAB. Uh, second panel. A lot of people have been taking Chattanooga over Illinois that I've seen. I've seen plenty of people take the mocks. They just got in off a buzzer beater against Furman. I don't see this upset happening. I think Kofi Coburn is going to eat. And Illinois is going to come away with a win. Colorado State. Okay. 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 One of these things just doesn't belong. I don't know what song that is. I know there's a song that says, one of these things just doesn't belong. Uh, Michigan, total frauds. They're 17 and 14. They're barely over 500, and they got a bye. This should be Texas A&M right here. That is complete robbery that Michigan is getting a spot. Um, not only that, IU has to play in a play-in. After we just beat Michigan, I'm an IU fan. If you didn't know, I'm going to be going there in the fall. But that's bad, and they don't deserve to be in. They're not a good team, in my opinion. Colorado State, they've got some really good players. Um, easily, I think Colorado State will win that game. Tennessee, now I will say Longwood's got a squad. They have a squad. They have a really good team. I debated about picking Longwood. They have some really good players on their team. They went, I think, like 20-1 and one in the Big South. Tennessee, close. Real close, Tennessee. Last two games. Loyola, easy. Easy Loyola over Ohio State. Without a doubt, I'm taking Loyola. I mean... They are all, They always perform well in the tournament as of late. They're very well coached. I know their coach just left for Oklahoma. Well, the new coach they've got in there has done a good job. And Ohio State has been looking shaky lately. They just lost to Nebraska, just lost to Penn State. They have not been playing well. And Loyola, their conference championship was a while ago, so they've had some time to rest up and get ready. Uh, Ramblers, easy. And then Villanova, they're just, they're insane right now. Easily, easy, easy. Give me, uh, give me the cats. Round two, I think Arizona and Illinois have, will both be able to win. I think those are two pretty straightforward matchups, uh, in my opinion. I thought about this column. I think this is a tough draw for Tennessee. This is, I feel like Tennessee winning the SEC got a really tough draw because, First of all, they got to play a tough 14 seed in the first round. I mean, Longwood, Longwood's got a Longwood's got a good team. Not only the play tough, Colorado State and is a very capable team that could win here, and they're paired next to Villanova down here. So Tennessee got a really unfortunate draw, in my opinion. Um, I do think they'll beat Colorado State, but I kind of felt Tennessee kind of got hosed, in my opinion, and I'm going to be taking. Uh, Villanova over Loyola. But Loyola is good, but I mean, Villanova is on a, on a tear right now. This game, I think, is really important. Remember how I said at the start that uh, Arizona's got a bunch of big men that just run up and they'll destroy you if you don't have a good guy in the middle? Well, Illinois, they've got Co Kofi Cobert, who's as best as it comes. I think the I think in this bracket, in this region. Illinois could pose the biggest threat to Arizona just because of that one reason. But I think Arizona's a much more well-rounded team. And Illinois has had some shaky games this year. Uh, I do think Arizona is better, and I will be taking uh, Arizona. And what else do we got here? Um, I got to move this further back so we can get to the Final Four. 
Villanova, Tennessee, like I said, tough draw for Tennessee. Nova is hot right now. Completely ran through the Big East. Um, I like the Wildcats here. And then we got an all-Wildcats matchup in the Elite Eight. Now, in my opinion, right now, as of how they've been playing, these are the two best teams in college basketball. Arizona, in my in my most recent bracketology, that was my national championship, was Arizona uh, and Villanova. I think these two teams are great. Now, there's a reason I'm going to pick one of these two, and it's going to be Arizona, because I think that in order to beat Arizona, you have to have a dominant man in the middle. And that's why I think Illinois poses the biggest threat to Arizona in this region. Villanova, a terrific team, and they definitely could have a chance to win this game. But they do most of their work outside on the perimeter, trying to get open shots. They don't do much of their work in the middle. They're very much, Tennessee and Villanova are very much perimeter teams, whereas Illinois can pound it down in the middle. Uh, I definitely see Arizona coming out of this region, but Villanova will give them a tough game. Uh, I think these two teams have been looking like the best right now. But I got I got the Cats. All right, let's move down to the to the Midwest region. All right, Midwest region. We got some interesting teams here. Very, very interesting teams here. Kansas is the favorite, obviously one seed. Uh, won the Big 12 as they normally do. I know Baylor won it last year. Baylor's also a one seed in the East, but uh, we got some legit teams in here. Kansas, Auburn has been great the entire year. I thought they maybe could get a one, kind of folded near the end of the year, but they're definitely one seed caliber. Great team there in Auburn. Uh, USC and Miami both, I think, are underrated. Um, LSU's decent. Iowa just went on a big run and won the Big Ten. Providence, I don't know about Providence. They've got some good players. Um, Providence is a streaky sort of sort of team. Uh, we've got one fraud here, Iowa State. If you've been watching the channel, you know why. Wisconsin, Johnny Davis, great player. Co-Big Ten regular season champs. Good region. So uh, let's, uh, let's get it started. I'm going to take Kansas first round over the winner of Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and Texas Southern. I... I if I had to pick that game, I, I'll take Texas Southern, I guess, because they beat Florida. That's why Florida's not in the tournament. <laughs> Florida would have made the tournament if, if it wasn't for that loss. I'm not even kidding. Uh, this game is literally a coin flip. Two, I think, underrated teams. And two teams that I think could have a chance to beat Kansas in the second round. San Diego State and Creighton. Uh, two, two solid squads. I went back and forth on this one. I ended up taking San Diego State. They impressed me with their win over Colorado State. Um, I know Creighton just smashed Providence, too. And Iowa, I think, will beat Richmond. Richmond kind of had a fluky run. I don't think that they're a real threat for a 5-12 upset. Iowa's got Keegan Murray and a bunch of studs. So I'm going to take, uh, take Iowa. Next up, Jacks on top. Jack's on top. You know, you know, if you've been watching the Bracket Challenge, you know how much I love South Dakota State. They're 30 and 4. 30 and 4. Won the Summit League. What uh they're I think top 10 or top 15 in adjusted offense. They're the leading three-point shooting team in the entire country. Providence, a team that's kind of gotten blown out in some games and has had some fluky wins. No chance. Jacks, easy, easy upset. You got to pick this one. That's a guaranteed upset, in my opinion. LSU, Iowa State, like I said, Iowa State's been limping their way into the tournament. They have been playing like garbage recently. They're lucky to still have a winning record. Uh, they were like 7 and 13 in conference. I don't even know why they're here. They really don't deserve I honestly, I honestly think Michigan deserves to be here more than Iowa State. LSU, easy. Wisconsin, now Colgate. Has been a pretty good team the last few years. Almost beat uh, Arkansas last year. They had a big lead on and then lost it. I'm going to take Wisconsin. Uh, these games, LSU, Iowa State, Wisconsin, these are all in Milwaukee. That's a huge home court advantage for Wisconsin. Um, by the way, that, uh, it's at Pfizer Forum, which is, I believe, Mar Marquette's home stadium. But Wisconsin should be able to win that game. At the bottom... I've got Miami over USC. Uh, two, I think, very underrated teams, Miami and USC. Two used-to-be dominant football programs that are now terrible at football. Uh, get it done in basketball. 
Uh, Miami had that win over Duke earlier in the year. They've looked impressive. Uh, same thing with USC. They had that win over UCLA. They've played some other teams really well. Uh, close game. I like Miami a little bit more. Miami has really looked, I think, impressive in the last few days leading up to the tournament. So I'm going to take Miami. And Auburn over actually a fraud in Jacksonville State. Uh, they didn't even win their conference tournament. They got in by default because the team that won their conference was uh, ineligible. So Auburn, Auburn by a million. Now, I think San Diego State has a chance to upset Kansas. I don't think it'll happen, though. Kansas. Jacks on top. South Dakota State. I'm telling you, these two teams are literally identical. High-powered offensive squads that love to shoot it from three. It could be first to 90 wins that game. Uh, two great high-powered offenses. I think Iowa spent all their bullets in the Big Ten tournament. I really do. The teams that go on hot runs in their conference tournament, it's one of two things. They're either going on a they're either carrying that momentum into the tournament, or it's either they spent all their bullets and they're not doing anything in the tournament. Think of look at Oregon State last year. Went on a big run and made the Elite Eight. And then look at Georgetown. Lot got shelled in the first round against Colorado. One of the two. I like the Jacks. Jacks on top. That's my Cinderella team. Love South Dakota State. Like I said, this would be a I think this would be a close game if it was literally anywhere else but Milwaukee. It's literally a home court game for Wisconsin. If this was in like, I don't know, LA, I I would think about taking an upset. But since it's basically a home court advantage for Wisconsin, I'm going to have to take them. That's the same thing with Villanova in their first few round games. They're in Philly. That's also very much a home court for Villanova. And I'll take Auburn over Miami. Uh, could be a good game, but I like the, the Tigers. Now, no 13 seed or lower has ever made the Elite Eight. 13, uh, 12 seed is the lowest to make the Elite Eight. Missouri did it one year as a 12 seed, and Oregon State did it last year. Will the Jacks become the lowest team to make uh, to make the Elite Eight? I don't think so. I think Kansas is... They're kind of getting slept on in this tournament, I feel like. I feel like a lot of people are not picking... I feel like they're kind of getting slept on. Still got a Baji. They still got the Lightfoot dude. Uh, they, they've got a good squad. And Wisconsin and Auburn, no more home court for Wisconsin. Uh, th uh, these games are actually, these games are being played. These three games will be in Chicago. So maybe they'd have a home court advantage. I still like Auburn, though. Auburn's definitely all around the better squad. Uh, Jabari Smith, dog. Kessler, Walker Kessler, dog. Uh, KB Johnson, dog. I mean, they've just got a lot of studs on their team and I really, they were my national champion pick for a while, and I still like them. People uh, people were getting annoyed on how high I was on Auburn the whole year. Uh, it's not changing. I'm still high on Auburn. I still got them going uh, and make it a run. And then to make the Final Four, Kansas or Auburn? I don't know, man. I really don't know. My gut says Kansas. My heart says Auburn. I'm going to follow my heart. Auburn to the Final Four. Bruce Pearl's making it back there. Uh, it, this is a good region. I, I like what we got here. I'm going to take the Tigers to make it back to the Final Four. Um, so now the last region that we have to do, the East. And this, oh, this region is a doozy. That well, Let's just look at it right now. Okay. In my opinion... This is the strongest region, and there's no question about it. Baylor, amazing team. You're defending national champions. They definitely have a... They're the favorite to win this. Uh, obviously, all the one seeds are the favorites to win. Kentucky, great team. They are always a threat. Didn't make it to March Madness last year. They're looking to come back with a vengeance this year. So, Kentucky, really good team. Purdue, one of the best offenses in all of the country with Jaden Ivey and Sasha Stefanovic. They have some good players. UCLA, my preseason pick to win it all. Um, Johnny Juzang and uh, the Hawkeyes dude and Tiger Campbell, they play as a team. They're a very well-rounded squad. Uh, they know what it's like to win. They made it last year. St. Mary's, terrific defensive squad. 
Um, they they don't even allow more than 60 points a game. They beat Gonzaga, too. Uh, Murray State is 30 and two. They've been running through teams uh, in in this in uh, through the entire year. Uh, Murray State dog. Uh, Texas, my UCLA and Texas was my preseason championship matchup. Virginia Tech is as hot as any team right now. They just stormed through the ACC with no resistance, pretty much. They dominated that conference and were able to steal a bit, in my opinion. Uh, did I miss anyone? San Francisco's got some good players. North Carolina's in this. This is by far this right. This region is anyone's game. It's anyone's region in this region. Anyone can win this region. But let's get it started. I like Baylor over Norfolk State. I will say, people love to be like, oh, could a 16 seed win again? And don't pick it. I will say, though, if, if there is one, if the most likely 16 seed to win would be Norfolk State. They've got a good team, but they're not going to win. North Carolina, Marquette. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is kind of a mismatch. This this could be more like a 7-10. North Carolina, when they're at their best, they're great. When they're at their worst, anyone can beat them. But I think they'll be uh they'll be up and ready for the for the tournament. IU and Wyoming in the play-in. That'll be a good play-in game. Uh hopefully my Hoosiers will win. Uh, I got IU, and this is kind of a biased pick. I kind of gotta go with my college or my future college. I got to go with IU. Uh, St. Mary's has some great players. I mean, if you took St. Mary's, fine, good. I mean, they're a great squad. Uh, but I, I, this is a biased pick. I, I got to go with IU here. Uh, I, I'm kind of, my hands are tied, man. I got I got to go with my Hoosiers. Um, and, and they definitely will have a chance to win. I mean, Tracy X and Davis can dominate anyone in the country. Next, UCLA. Over Akron. Akron did look great in the MAC. Holy cow, did they look good. Dominated uh, all the teams. And they almost beat Ohio State this year. So, possible upset there, but I like UCLA. This has been a very popular upset. Virginia Tech over Texas. Very popular upset. I'm going to stick with it. Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, I applied to get into Texas and they denied me. So, horns down. Give me Tech. Hokies, they're hot right now. Um, They've been looking unstoppable. Give me Virginia Tech. Purdue over the Ivy guys and Yale. I will say the Ivy League has won one-third of the games that they've made in the tournament. One-third of the time an Ivy League team wins. I don't think it'll be today, though. This matchup right here, Murray State and San Francisco, took me, I think, the longest out of anyone because I know if San Francisco, San Francisco is actually favored in this game by a point and a half, and I knew that the majority, I think 70% of people are on Murray State. So I was like, if I pick San Francisco, I could get some leverage with some good points. Like, it's, I was like, I get a lot of leverage. Like, it, it, when it comes to like a bracket challenge game, I know if I pick San Francisco and they win, I can get a lot of points there. But the game's in Indianapolis. That's a lot closer to Murray, Kentucky than it is to San Francisco. And Murray State's got some dogs, man. They run it up and down. They play fast. So does San Francisco. San Francisco likes to play fast, too. This will be a high-scoring game. Take the over in this game. I got to take Murray State, though. They're, I think, the better team. And then I'll take Kentucky over St. Peter's. Should be a pretty, pretty easy game there. North Carolina and Baylor. I've seen some people take North Carolina. And they maybe could win this game. But... I don't think the risk outweighs the reward, uh, but too much of a risk of that game. I would take the safe pick in Baylor, and I couldn't go with IU too far. I have a bracket. I filled that in ESPN tournament challenge bracket where I have IU winning it all. I think UCLA would uh, would win there. All right. Now, to be honest, this bracket has been pretty chalky. Pretty. Uh, this has been a pretty chalky bracket. I don't know. I had Texas Tech. I had South Dakota State in there. But this has been a pretty chalky bracket, would you say? Think again. Virginia Tech and Murray State I have winning, and I'll tell you my reasons why for both. In the history of the tournament, there have been nine teams who have been top 10 in offense and less than a hundredth and lower than a hundredth in defense. That's what Purdue is. Our top 10 in offense, below 100th in defense. 
There have been nine teams like that. One of them made the Sweet 16. Two of them made the round of 32. And the rest were knocked out in the first round. Defense wins championships. And Purdue doesn't have it. They don't have a defense. Virginia Tech absolutely ripped Duke to shreds. They literally were playing inspired, wanted it more. If they, they can come out and do the same thing against Purdue, they are hot. Do not mess with the Hokies right now. Do not do it. Because um, they will rip you to shreds. Uh, easy, I think, easy upset there. Not a very well-rounded team in Purdue. They're kind of a one-trick pony on offense. And I like Murray State. I got to ride with Murray State. They're 30 and 2. Tell me you're going to bet against a team that's 30 and 2. I mean, come on now. They're, you're, you're just not going to do it. Um, I like Murray State here a lot over Kentucky. Um, it's an in state rivalry. I think Murray State's going to want it a little bit more. I know that's a bad reason to pick teams. Oh, they're going to want it more. But that's my reason. To the Elite Eight. I like UCLA. Very well-rounded team. Did it last year. Think about this. They both made, both these teams made the Final Four last year. UCLA is better this year than they were last year. Baylor, not as good as they were last year. I like UCLA. Revenge tour. Revenge tour mindset for UCLA. Bruins. And then, oh, maybe the two hottest teams in the country right now playing with some fire. I'm riding with the racers. Murray State to the Elite Eight over Virginia Tech. Uh, that'd be a great game. But to go to the Final Four, I picked a seven. I picked, I think they said that the last, like, ten Final Fours I featured, like, a seven-seed or lower. I mean, there have been plenty of Final Fours with a seven-seed or lower. I'm not. I've picked a seven seed before. I picked Wofford to go to the Final Four one year. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to rock with the Bruins to make the Final Four. So our Final Four, we've got Texas, UC, Texas Tech, UCLA, Auburn, and Arizona. Who, who's taking on the chip? We're gonna we're gonna find out right now. All right, here we are. Now I went back and forth on both of these games like a ton. Because these are four terrific teams. UCLA, Texas Tech. I know who I'm taking, and it's for one reason and one reason only why I'm taking Texas Tech. These teams match each other in so many ways. They're both extremely well-rounded. They're both complete teams. They both have shooters. They can both work inside. They're both well-coached. It's literally a 50-50 in this game. The reason I'm taking Texas Tech is because the Final Four is in New Orleans. And Texas Tech, I feel like, is going to pull a lot more fans than a team from Los Angeles. I'm not even kidding. I, that was literally the tiebreaker. I had no idea. This is such an evenly matched game. But I will be taking UCLA. Or no, I'm Texas Tech. Uh, and that as for Arizona and Auburn, Walker Kessler versus that Coloco dude and Matherin, that would be a great matchup to watch inside. These two teams have been terrific all year, but... I got to take Arizona. They've looked like the best team right now. I got the Cats uh, going to the chip. Um, and to win it all, Arizona and Texas Tech. I feel like I already have Texas Tech going maybe a little bit too far. And Arizona has really looked like the best team in college basketball. They really have. I, I think that there are very few teams that could stop them. Um, that's my pick, Arizona, uh, to win it all. So I'll back up. That's the full bracket if you want to screenshot or do anything with that or make fun of me when this eventually uh, turns into flames. Uh, but that's the bracket. Arizona has my pick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment your picks down below. I love you guys. And I will see you uh, with some reactions to some streams. The first stream, first stream I can guarantee you is tomorrow. This game right here. Go Hoosiers, baby. But uh, yeah, I'll see y'all next time.